On January 14th, 2024, I will be aiming to run the Houston Chevron Marathon in under three hours. Or, speaking strictly in cliche, my goal is to go sub three. This is my third attempt at sub three, and in this video, we are going to discuss what's different this time around. You have heard the phrase, easy days easy, hard days hard. Well, what if I told you, easy days easier. First, number one, easy days easier. I'm talking recovery paces, nine minutes a mile. Sometimes 8.30, okay? Sometimes 9.15. Seriously, sometimes 8.30, sometimes 9.15, mostly landing around nine minutes a mile. You know what I did last time? I did do my easy days easy, aerobically easy. As a runner with a low heart rate training background, sometimes my easy pace can get down to about seven minutes and 45 seconds a mile or about eight minutes a mile. And while this is easy on my heart, this is not easy on my legs and it has the same effect as the newbie runner who is running their easy days too hard and doesn't have the legs to do their hard days hard enough. So what's different Damn it, it's in the title, okay? Easy days easier. As a consequence, I have been able to hit my hard days harder. Hard days harder. But more on that later. The second thing I'm doing differently is I hired a coach. In attempt number one, I coached myself. For attempt number two, I used a McMillan training plan. I do believe it is the same one that Joshua Hubbard is using. He's a running YouTuber, support your fellow micro YouTubers. I'll put a link to his channel at the end of this video. He's going for sub three at the Philadelphia Marathon. Best of luck, Joshua. For attempt number three, I've hired a coach. His name is Ernan Rosenberg. His company is Push the Pace Coaching, and he does push the pace. Oh my God, it's like a boxer out there speed bagging my nuts. Like I'll put a thing, a link to his coaching. <laughs> okay, so what I did last time was I followed this McMillan plan and it is prescribed time on feet. It may be a 70 minute easy run. And then the pace is usually a range of paces, 715 to 823 aerobically. What I am doing differently, my coach prescribes to a very specific pace, eight miles at a nine minute pace, eight miles at a nine, to 915 pace. As a consequence, this forces me into some very uncomfortable zone one runs where my heart rate's in the 120s that I would never prescribe myself. This brings me to my major point. What I'm doing differently, number three, hard days, harder. Hard days. Harder. Okay, now I wanna get into a couple examples of what I mean by hard days harder. I don't really wanna bore you guys, but I have to show you what I mean. Okay, last week, 10 weeks away from the marathon, we had five by 1600 with a 400 meter rest. The first two miles were at 605 pace. The next two miles were at 555, and the fifth mile was at a 545. This week, I've got three times 2K at a six minute pace with a 400 meter rest. And then I've got six reps, 400 meter reps at a 520 to 530 pace for a total of five miles of speed work. Okay, now compared to what I used to do, there's like 12 by 400, three miles, or maybe a 16 by 400, four miles. Okay, so hard days harder on the outline with A being the volume of speed work is more and that's different. B would be the paces are much faster. I get my schedule on a weekly basis to final surge and every time I look at it, I click on the workouts and I'm like, who does this I think that I am. I get hit those paces. And yet when I arrive on Tuesday, I surprise myself. Okay, letter C under the hard days harder category is that I'm doing a whole lot more speed work for my macro level. So Tuesdays, I do the 5K interval type of work or speed work. Thursdays, I have tempo or thresholdy stuff. And on the weekend, I have a long run. Inside the long run, usually some marathon pace miles. What I did with the McMillan plan was a lot more volume, but a lot less speed work. Maybe I got all the way up to 75, 80 miles a week with the McMillan plan. Here, I'm sitting around 50 to 55, but with a lot of speed work. What is it, 80, 20, 60, 40, 40, 60, 50, 50? I don't know, I was an English major. Okay, I, I couldn't I couldn't tell you, but it's a lot more speed work. The hard days harder is not just benefiting me physiologically, but also mentally and is for knowledge. Cliche alert. Coaches make you do hard things. Do hard things harder. Yeah, uh, that's, that's not a thing. What I mean by do hard things under the subtitle of hard days harder is really more for the mental component, not just the physiological adaptations that my body is going through. So when my coach was out there pacing me on those five times 1600 meter repeats in the humidity, I felt like I was getting waterboarded. And 
when I'm out there on race day, it's not gonna feel easy, but it's gonna feel easier knowing that I've done much harder things. What I'm doing differently, number four, call to action, time to subscribe, or don't. I don't give a shit. Like, don't like, whatever. I don't make any money on this channel. I'm not sponsored by anybody. And I gotta just make content and put it out there. Do whatever you want. Okay, the next thing that I'm doing differently in this cycle is that I am strength training. You see, last time in my last block, I did strength training. And this time, I'm doing strength training. What's the difference, you ask? Well, one time I said strength, and then the other time I said strength. Please stop. Please stop doing that right now. You see, here's a guy. His name is Mike. He's got a stellar channel called Renaissance Periodization. It's on all things lifting, and I will summarize it or paraphrase or misquote the shit out of it likely. You ever see a guy like this? Just like real stout dudes who can bench a literal ton? Yeah, these are called power lifters. And they're different than these guys who are known as bodybuilders. Sometimes they get lumped together, but they're different and they live differently. So what's the difference? There are many differences. I recommend you check out his channel. I'm just gonna highlight the main difference. Okay, so what I did last time, regular old strength training, squats, deadlifts, calf raises, usually three to five sets. The rep range is somewhere between six and 15, close to failure, if not all the way. This falls inside the scope of hypertrophy or building muscle or bodybuilding. We've got to pump the iron, which is different than strength training. I'm still doing squats and deadlifts and calf raises, but in a rep range of one to four and much, much, much heavier. I am not building new muscle. I'm not as sore. I am maximizing the muscle that I do have to be stronger. Note, I am not doing plyometrics. I am not doing power workouts. I am not doing any sprinting. I'm not trying to be Noah Lyles. I am not Prefontaine. I, maybe, I post Fontaine maybe, but I, I don't, I don't know what that means. So that's what I'm doing differently. I actually really want to know what you did differently in your training that got you over the obstacle, over the hump, your writers, your runner's block. Most YouTubers, when they ask you to put in the comments below what your whatever is, they just want you to do that so that their videos now pop up into your feed more. I don't care about that. I really just want to know what your best practices are so I can steal them. Thank you for supporting the channel in that way. Till next time.